two before, and certainly that summer when I made that statement about social democracy and when I made um, uh, the ITN item and when I started doing the Welsh language thing and Europe and things of that kind, I was beginning to be obviously disengaged. Now, I didn't think I was, you see. I was just being a normal person. My character, my personality, my outward goingness, I am a public representative elected by the people of Carmarthen who want me to say what I stand for, what I believe in, and there I am. Now I thought that is what normal politicians do, but since then I've learned a lot. They don't do that. They, they don't tell their true feelings three quarters of the time. And that is where the disillusionment with politics has crept in increasingly and then you end up with a society today where everybody says they're all alike. They look alike, they behave alike, they talk alike. Well, they are alike because they want to be alike. Anyway, so yes, I knew things were going. The last day before I left for the general election uh, in October 74, I met with David Ellis Thomas in the central lobby of the House of Commons. I don't know whether he would deny it today, uh, but I can tell you that he told me, I know you're going to lose, he said, because the momentum is with Grinvor, but I'd much rather, he said, to see you back here. Now that's what David told me then, he would probably deny it to his dying day that he said that, but that's exactly what he said. And he was the last MP I spoke to as I went to the car, um, for the campaign. You know, I went back down to Kamala. Anyway, um, we are now talking about, yes, there isn't much to talk about the campaign. It was, a, uh, it was, there was something inevitable about it. It was a tactical voting campaign. You know what I mean? You were either for Gwynvo or for Gwynoro. Simple story. You know, you were either more pro Plaid Cymru and anti-Labour all the other way around. So Liberals and, and uh, Tories had to make a choice. They realised there was no point voting Tory, there was no point voting Liberal, and whereas in the years before those two parties in the 70s would have had maybe 9,000 or 5,000 or 4,000 votes, depending on which one of them might get more than the other. This time, I think one party had about 1,800 and the other party had about 1,000 odd because their voters had to make a decision. Hence, Gwynro's vote went up and my vote went up. The trouble was, Gwynro's vote went up higher. As simple as that. It was a, you know, um, nothing more that could be said about it. There was nothing I could do to stop tactical voting. And whereas tactical voting had happened in Carmarthen for years. Um, you know, it happened in 70, happened in 74, I'm sure it happened in the by-election in 66, that if there were people who wanted Labour out to win Gwynvo, Tories and those would have... You know, tactical voting was a way of life in West Wales. Cardiganshire as well. Tactical voting. Once you had the fourth party, and that's what Plant Cymru bought, brought to the to the plate, to the process. You have four parties. Now you can widen the choice and bring in tactical voting. And the big game always was who was second. And if you're second and you want to get rid of number one, you know what to do. You all vote for number two. And that's what happened. As easy as that. Nothing I could have done about it. So tactical voting, and by now, of course, the Liberal Democrats elevated tactical voting to a huge level in the 80s. And the STP did as well, with uh, Jenkins in Hill End and Shirley Williams in Crosby and uh, on and on and on, you know, and many other seats with less than known candidates, tactical voting. Now, so, I was going to lose. We tried our best, you know, we got a good vote, enjoyed the campaign, nothing wrong with it, but it was inevitable. 
So I had to make a decision. I was, I, I was looking for a job. In the middle of a campaign, I was looking for a job. And I saw this job, Director of Research and Central Intelligence for West Glamorgan County Council. And I read it and it made brilliant sense to me. This is a job I can do. I research, uh, advising the chief executive, advising the council members, a Labour council, West Glamorgan, you know, all my friends were there of the part, I was still there, I hadn't left the Labour Party, they were all there, the councillors on personal terms with me, and so I said, I've got to go for this. So I asked for an application form in my father's name, uh, to Banner Avon. I didn't give my address in Cardiff, or it, people could start rumbling things, so, my father applied for the job of director of research. I don't know whether he, I don't know whether he would have done the job well, but but he applied. So two days before the election, I was busily completing the application form on your letter of application, and you know, I was preoccupied with that, not with not with the election in Kilmarnock. So on election night, just before going to the count, I had finished the application closed the envelope and waited for the month's Friday morning. That was the closing date. It's only been a luck I've had in a long time, that was. Well, it could have been, if the closing date was, say, on the Friday Thursday, I would have been in a, a problem. But the closing date was the Friday, the day after the election. So Friday morning, I went into the car, went down to the uh, Guild Hall in Swansea, because at that time the new county hall for West Glamorgan had not been built that's where the, the main office was. And I don't think anybody noticed. In fact, I reckon I put it through the letterbox at the, en at the entrance to the door of the great door, get on, even though it was open, and told the usher man on the inside. I just left a mess letter in the, in the letterbox. I'm very sorry, I could have given it to you. So they went to fetch it and took it to the appropriate department, you see.